Our thoughts are not real, but they're generated by real synapses in the brain, right? Thoughts are concepts. They're conceptual. You can't like, you can't grab a thought, right? You can't, you can't cut open the brain and find the thought. Yo, Elliot. You got it, boo, uh, Aaron. Blonde in the belly of the beast and Roosh V. It was such a great interview. They did a really good job. Andrew. Andrew Pershong, I got you here, buddy. Yo, Elliot, curious what your thoughts are about diet and exercise as it pertains to mental health. I started eating meat and cooked vegetables only. Uh, a little bit of carbs like potatoes, berries, and rice. And I have much less anxiety. Considering trying carnivore to take it to the next level, but scared uh, if I do carnivore that I'll be sensitive to everything when I get off. Wondering what your thoughts are on this. So uh, the first question, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Uh, your diet and exercise is going to, bro, your mental health is is physiological. It's crazy because, you know, we think of thoughts as something that's sort of ephemeral, right? Like thoughts are concepts. They're ideas. They're, they're not real. Our thoughts are not real, but they're generated by real synapses in the brain right? Thoughts are concepts. They're conceptual. You can't like, you can't grab a thought, right? You can't, you can't cut open the brain and find the thought, right? So we're talking about mental health, right? Which is, 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 uh, expressed through your thought world. Um, but those thoughts are generated and those thoughts are colored by literal neurotransmitters that are popping and clicking and, and shooting around in your brain. And so those neurotransmitters are highly, and not just your brain, your brain here, but also your brain here. There's really fascinating work re done right now, which has been around for quite a while, on the stomach being the second brain. And so diet has a lot to do with that as well. I'll go into it. But if we're going, if the content of the thoughts we're having are to be positive, that means the chemical reactions and the physiology that supports it needs to be healthy, right? And where does that come from? It comes from the foods that you eat and it comes from the activity you engage in. Fresh air, sunshine, movement, good food, right? They're all going to affect your brain, your brain brain, but also and this is where carnivore comes in and just something that you might want to consider. The, the, the they call they have a new word for it. Uh, the biosphere, I think, right? Like basically the content of good and bad bacteria within the gut, right? There's, I, I back in the day when I studied this stuff, they didn't have the new, the new term. It's called like biosphere or some shit like that, right? They use this, it's a new term. But basically, we would talk in terms of dysbiosis being an imbalance between the good and bad bacteria in the gut. And diet, particularly uh, elimination diets, and in particular, carnivore diets have been known to heal gut dysbiosis by creating a, uh, a more friendly gut biosphere, you know, better bacteria in the belly through carnivore diets, through eat. And I think it probably has to do with, you know, being in ketosis as well and the elimination of a lot of toxins that are found in grains and vegetables. And of course, the, you know, the toxic response to sugar. And so carnivore is kind of like a, uh, an elimination diet. I don't know if I'm convinced that it's a lifestyle diet, meaning like you just, just live on it. And maybe some people can, but I don't think it's right for all people. That's just my opinion right now. I'm not the expert, but it's just the way I think about it. But if you're dealing with any kind of problems, any kind of problems, any kind of physiological or mental problems, it is, I think it's of your, I think it is, I think it's a good idea to do an elimination diet, particularly a carnivore diet. You know, Jordan Peterson uh, had some videos up where he was talking about how he was suffering from depression at some point. Now, I don't know how true it is because I also knew that he was taking medication. But he was, he, he, his daughter, I think, must have convinced him that his diet has something to do with it. And he was eating, you know, he started feeling better after eliminating like grains and sugars. I think he's got an interview on Joe Rogan where he talks about this. 
But then he was just eating vegetables and meat and he was doing all right. He was feeling a lot better, but it was still just not like 100%. And then his daughter said, hey, why don't you take out the meat, take out the, um, take out the vegetables and just eat meat. And then all of a sudden, like all his depression or whatever he's problem having in his brain uh, and his thoughts cleared up. And so, you know, he became a proponent of the carnivore diet as a means to um, healing mental health issues. So there's... There's anecdotal evidence, and I do believe that if you do your research, you will find scientific evidence to the, the concept that you can, first of all, heal your gut dysbiosis by restoring the, 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 the biosphere or whatever, you know, whatever that term is, hopefully I'm saying the right term, of your gut, right, um, which will have effects on your brain. It's an elimination diet. And so one of the things that you might want to consider with regard to elimination diet, and I know you talk about, you know, you know, getting sensitive to everything when you come off, microbiome. Thank you, Francis. <laughs> microbiome. <laughs> That's what they call it. Um, so when you say you do this uh, elimination diet and you feel great and you do it for a couple of weeks or whatever, what's beautiful about an elimination diet is because the diet is so pure. You're just eating meat. That's all you're doing, you're eating meat. When you, you could very slowly start introducing things one at a time. Boom, boom, and seeing how it works. So say, say uh, you're eating just meat and then like, okay, let me try berries, right? And you just add berries, just back to your diet, wait like a week. Hmm, do I feel better or do I feel worse? If you immediately start feeling worse, you know, oh, mm -mm, no more berries. You take the berries out. Or you, then you try a different thing, right? And so on and so forth. So you can slowly start reintroducing back into your diet various things that maybe you want to be there. But if you just, if you do an elimination diet and then you just go back to eating everything, <laughs> you ain't gonna know what the culprit is. You don't know what the culprit is. You don't know what it is that's screwing you up. So it's well worth it. It's well worth trying. It's well worth doing. I would, I would say, I would give you a thumbs up. And, um, and just come full circle. Absolutely, 100%. Diet and exercise affects your mental health. We also know that lifting increases testosterone. And t and T levels, low T levels are linked to depressive mind states. Did you know that? That a lot of a lot of our problems as men that um you know that are dealt with uh on an individual basis, meaning like, oh, you got ED, right? Erectile dysfunction, or you have um, depression, or you have anxiety, or you have, you know, all these various different things that people have. A lot of them, a lot of them can be linked back to low T. And just by increasing your testosterone, a lot of those things just go away. It's amazing, isn't it? Testosterone is like that leverage, that leverage hormone for men. So also, you know, get your T levels checked. I always tell you to do that. But um, in terms of uh, lifting and exercise, it's been known to increase T levels and, of course, mental health as a result. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here. And I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.